Eddie Rodosovich, George Stoy here. Oklahoma wins 28 to 11. And, uh, you know, George, I, it was, I don't know. Like, it, let's talk defense because offensively they just, it was not good tonight. Uh, they struggled through the first half. They finally got some things going in the fourth quarter, pulled away late. But, uh, you know, it was one of those games that SMU, they score, they get a two-point conversion, and all of a sudden I think there was a little bit of nervous energy within the stadium. Well, I mean, think about what happened last year. I think everybody was like, oh, oh, you know, yeah. here we go again, right? Sure. And and you saw it, you know, last year they lost a lot of those fourth quarter games. And I think it was, I think what you, if we want to talk positives, Oklahoma being able to go down the field, score 11 play drive, 75 yards. Dylan Gabriel was really good on that drive. Big third down conversions. They get the touchdown. Then they turn around and they get a turnover on downs. And they turn around and they score to close out the game. That doesn't happen a year ago, or maybe it's a little bit tighter down the stretch, right? So to see that, you mentioned the defense. The defense was great tonight. I thought that they were, other than the one touchdown drive, and even on that drive. A lot of, they, lot of penalties. Right, they had some penalties. They converted a couple fourth downs because of those penalties. Uh, you know, I, I thought Peyton Bowen was fantastic tonight. Danny Stutzman, 17 tackles, second highest in his career in a game. He was awesome. I mean, I thought the defense, was the pass rush there? At times, they they forced pressure so now. It, it, it seemed like they, they got pressure, yeah. but they could just never get home. Well, and, you know, Ethan Downs had the one sack at the end of the game that was called off right. because of the face mask. I mean, they were getting to him at times. They dialed it up, and they made him uncomfortable. But I thought the defense was really good. They gave up a few big pass plays. That's going to happen. SMU's got some good players that, you know, Preston Stone's a good quarterback. Like, they're going to give up some of those big passing plays. But overall, I thought the defense played well. I thought the story of the game was the offense and how just how much they struggled the entire game it felt like. Let me ask you and this is this is a completely like kind of off the wall question. Mm -hmm. But from down here it just looked like the offensive line had a rough night. And we knew that SMU had a pretty good defensive line coming into the game. It just seemed like there just there was no rhythm. Yeah, no, and I thought it felt like their defensive line was able to put pressure on Gabriel immediately at times. Uh, other times in the running game, it was, you know, Tawi Walker having to break a tackle in the backfield to make something happen. I mean, Tawi Walker was the star of the offense sure. tonight. I mean, he was he was fantastic for them. But I felt like the interior offensive line struggled. You know, Savion Bird got pulled there in the first quarter. Troy after, Everett played a lot, a lot in the first yeah. half. And then Bird came in at the end on those last couple drives. So, I think the offensive line still has some kinks to work out. I mean, they also had some some bad penalties, and you had the Tyler Guyton one that called back a touchdown. They still end up scoring on that drive, but it just felt like they were out of sync all game. And, and I think a large part of that was SMU was taking away a lot of what they like to do, which is throw the ball down the field. They're playing too high safety, a lot of that stuff that, uh, you know, takes away that deep ball. So I think it just kind of threw them out of rhythm. It was a rough night, and yeah. you know, I, even down here, there was a lot of booze at some points in the third quarter. Uh, especially, I think on like the third and sixth, they ended up running the ball and came up short and had yeah. to punt. But uh, yeah, tonight was about the defense, and you know, for the first time in a long time, it feels like you walk out of here and it's like, okay, maybe they do have a defense. Oklahoma goes seven quarters without allowing a touchdown to start the season. Brent talked about it in the press conference. That was the first time in like twenty something yeah. years uh, that they have done that, and so it was. It was just a strange night because you do walk away. You win by 17. You cover. Yeah. Great team Did, to cover. Didn't think that, that was going to happen at any point tonight, and especially after uh, SMU goes down and cuts it to a three-point game. But you do get out of it. And, you know, if nothing else, offensively, George, they made plays when they had to. Yeah, no, and, and, and again, it goes back to that – Last year, do they make those plays? Does Dylan Gabriel go on that drive? I thought he was really good on that 11 play drive. He had, you know, he had to thread the needle on a few of those passes. You think of the, I think it was third and six, the one to Drake Stoops. Yeah. That was a big play. He had a couple to Andrew Anthony, who's becoming wide receiver one. It's just those things with the offense where sometimes they look great, like they did early in the game on, on that first, or that second drive. And then other times they just totally disappear. And sometimes it's the play calling was, was kind of head scratching at times. I mean, they had one where it was third and seven and they just handed it off and got a yard and they had a third and four QB draw with Dylan Gabriel. I, I don't know, it was odd. And then, you know, the Jackson Arnold package worked at times and then the fourth and one. And that's what I was telling somebody after the game. You know, if they pick up that fourth and one on the Jackson Arnold deal and they go down and they score, they go up 21 to three. It's a different game. You're feeling a lot better. Maybe they pull away and win by a lot more. So it's a play here or there, but the inconsistencies with the offense, that's just where you want to see them improve. Well, let's talk about the Jackson Arnold package. I think that that got a lot of excitement within yeah. the stadium. Uh, I was a little surprised, George, that they threw it out there so early 
But at the same time, it's going to be interesting to see how that thing develops over time. I, I thought that we were going to get a Tim Tebow jump pass at some point yeah. uh, today. But that it does seem like that's what they're going to maybe try to go do uh, a couple times a game. I, I was just surprised that they threw it in so early today. Yeah, and at some point they're going to throw it right out of that. They're going to look like they're going to run on, on some of those packages, and all of a sudden Jackson's going to be able to throw the ball, and that's what makes it so dangerous. I will say, though, Eddie, as much excitement as there was for it, it didn't really work. Yeah. A whole lot. Right. Like it worked that one time. I think it was like a third and short, and he got you know eight yards on it. But other than that, it wasn't like he was just. It wasn't like the belldozer where he was easily picking up you know chunks of yards. I mean, it, he was really having to fight. And I think that's a product. The offensive line just didn't play well. I thought the interior offensive line, especially, weren't able to open up some of those gaps that they were a week ago. And I'll tell you, the running back situation is interesting. Yeah. I, you know, Tawi Walker's the best running back on this team at, that we've seen. Yeah. And I. I, I told somebody at halftime, I was like, where's Javante Barnes at? Yeah. I, I thought he ran the ball extremely well a week ago. And how about Gavin Sawchuk? He returns. I think he only had two snaps tonight, didn't touch the ball. I, I, I thought he was a guy that could be a difference maker. And, and even some of the freshmen, I thought there was a chance in the second half since there wasn't a whole lot going on. Maybe they throw out and they let a Caleb Hicks have some go at it, Daylon Smothers, whoever, because they are so deep there. I, I don't know. It gives you a little pause that they weren't able to run the ball a little bit better. The story for me, though, and we saw him early in the game with the block punt, the uh, the the pass back down on uh, the fourth and whatever it was. It was fourth down, fourth yeah. and two, I think it was. Uh, Peyton Bowen was phenomenal, and I, I it's kind of one of those things. I know it's cliche, and I know that people probably get sick and tired of hearing it, but you recruit five stars for that reason. He was fantastic. He was as advertised tonight, and it tells you the trust that. Brent has because I think it takes a lot for Brent to play young guys we've seen that throughout his career for him to play Peyton Bowen as much as he did tonight I think says a lot about how he's practicing the mental awareness I mean you and I've talked about it his football IQ is off the charts I mean that fourth down play he was not in a great position but he knew where the ball was going makes a great play on it super athletic I mean the kid is just special and I, I just think it's gonna be so hard to keep him off the field I think by the end of the season he could easily be a starter he's just too good P.J. Adebore got out there tonight, yeah. and he got out there early. It wasn't fourth quarter, uh, just get some get some action time. He was out there during meaningful snaps. And, and it was interesting. They had a lot of different packages on the third and long situational football. P.J. would come in, a trace four. They'd bring in Peyton Bowen a lot uh, as their extra defender. So they're playing a lot of young guys. I mean, I, I think that P.J., played well. There's a few times that he he almost got there. He had the one penalty, hands to the face, can't happen, those sorts of things. But, um, you know, I think he he's another guy that is just going to continue to play, especially when the pass rush is struggling as much as it is. Why not throw out a guy that looks like he does and see if he can't make a play? Another night, second week of the year, Kip Lewis all over the field. I, I thought he was exceptional yet again tonight. Yeah, Brent said it best, ball magnet. I mean, the, the kid just sees the ball really well. He has great instincts. He, he just it, it seems like wherever the ball's going, Kip Lewis is going to be there. I thought he had a great play on the punt. I think it was the first punt of the, the game. He, he made a nice tackle on that. I mean, he's, he's another guy that if he keeps playing well, he's going to find himself you know, playing. And, and I think this all goes to all the guys we're talking about on defense, that competitive depth. And I, I know we say that term a million times. We've heard it a million times. But Brent was talking about it post game. For them to go out and have the fourth quarter they did defensively, get some of those fourth down stops, get the even the interception at the end of the game by Justin right. Harrington. Those plays didn't happen a year ago, no. you know, and they didn't have guys that they could. Ro I mean, how many guys did they play on defense tonight in a really tight game? I mean, they they felt comfortable playing. You know, Kobe McKenzie was out there at the end of the game. Uh, you know, Kip Lewis. They they had so many the safeties. I mean, they played you know five or six safeties tonight. Robert Spears Jennings got a little bit of action tonight. Yeah. So I mean, I, I think that it just it makes you feel really good about the defense and just how many different guys they feel comfortable playing right now. You know, it's interesting moving forward because I think that, you know, Oklahoma goes to Tulsa next week. It should be a little bit of a cakewalk. I don't think that, yep. you know, they're going to go up there as a 20-something, maybe even 30-point favorite, I would imagine. Uh, you got a lot of uh, action tonight for a lot of young guys, uh, and they, they, are, they seem to be excelling. But at the same time, I think that we're going to go through this week, and it's going to be all about Oklahoma's offense and what they need to do to get things right. And, and I think it, it, there's also it, – it's – it's a combination of Oklahoma didn't play great tonight, and then you look over there and you see Texas beat Alabama by 10 on the road, sure. and you're like, sure. that game's only a few weeks away. And I think that that, that kind of opens everybody's eyes a little bit of saying, hey, they got to figure this out by that game. And, and uh, I, I think it's, it's one of those things that you just walk away that they, they pulled it out because I think, again, last year, who knows what happens, man? I, I, I think that there's a good chance. Even I, I told Katie McFarland from Tulsa at halftime, 
they're, this team last year, they're down 17-14 to 14 at halftime or 24-14 at halftime. Like, it, it could have gone sideways, and for them to be able to get through it, uh, Tawi Walker talked about the leadership in the locker room, how, how many guys that there was no panic on the yeah. sidelines. And I think that that's a positive moving forward. Like at the end of the day, you, you wake up, you're, you won by 17. Yeah. And you covered, and I think that you did what you set out to do. It just wasn't very pretty. And sometimes that you're going to go through that uh, in this sport, in, in any sport. You're going to go through that. And for a team to f still find a way to win and do so in a somewhat comfortable fashion, that's a positive. Uh, I know that there's a lot of people that probably want us to just tear everything down because it, it was pretty ugly at times. But at the same time, you get out of here with a win, and that has to be the uh, – kind of the, the main thing right now, right? Keeping yeah. the main thing the main thing, Jalen Hurts? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, exactly. But, yeah, I mean, I again, I think there's things oh, you can learn from this, and, and that's feeling confident about being able to close out a game. Yes, it's against SMU, who I think is going to end up being a really good football team. I mean, there's a good chance they play for their conference championship uh, and win, you know, 9, 10 games sure. this year. But I think that that just gives you a boost as, okay, you know, the next time adversity hits, we've been here before. We know how to go down on a long drive to score. You know, we know how to get a fourth down stop when we absolutely need to have it. I think those things you can take away and say, okay, we feel good. Now they got to stay healthy the next few weeks. They got to take care of business, right? They, they should be 5-0 and to start the year. And then you go to Texas and you, you have that big one. And I know that that's, that's what everybody's eyes are on yeah. after tonight and sure. what Texas did. But I think you just have to continue to feel good about the, the progress the defense is making. When was the last time? Oh, you had that kind of a defensive performance against a relatively good offense. Right. I mean, it's been some time. So I think that that's what you want to walk away from. And I guess maybe we're being sunshine pumpers right now about it. But yes, but for, to a certain extent. But, but, but where they were last year, right? I think you have to be you have to take away the positives because it was so many low points last year for the defense and the offense at times. I, I think that you have to just take away, you know, the small things and, and be happy about it, I guess, the small victories. One more positive, because we're going to keep this thing positive. Can I walk? I thought was yeah. really good tonight for the second straight week. And he comes in after Gentry Williams goes down in the first quarter. Gentry did come back into the game, but they stuck with Kanai, and I thought he was pretty good. He came up with a couple pass breakups, uh, solid tackling. Uh, it just seems like, you know, that's maybe a little bit of that competitive depth or whatever kind of depth that they have that – you just didn't see a year ago. And can I talked about it at practice on Tuesday, just in terms of, you know, having a little bit more confidence, feeling more com uh, comfortable within the system. And yeah. I think that you see something like that tonight. Yeah. I mean, he's a guy that is, again, in, in his second year in this system, you can tell he's feeling more comfortable getting more playing time. I, I thought his best play was, I think it was right before the fourth down that Peyton Bowen made the play. He had a pass breakup on, on third down, uh, really nice play all over the guy and, and, you know, bats the ball away. I mean, that's just great technique. And that's a guy being prepared. I mean, they threw the ball at him several times. So again, it just speaks to that. I'm interested. Where's Josiah Wagner? Is yeah. he maybe still banged up? I think Macari Vickers got into the game did. quite a bit tonight. He did. So, you know, I, I don't know what that corner room is going to look like. I know Brent said after the game, they need to stay healthy there. They don't have a ton of depth. So uh, going to be interesting to see how that plays out. One more uh, awkward moment at the end of the ball game. Uh, Art Bryles was on the sidelines for Oklahoma, and that's going to be a headline. We got to talk about it. Uh, it's you know, I I get it. It's Jeff Levy's father-in-law, the Oklahoma offense coordinator. Uh, you know, I, I think Jeff said after the game, like that's his kid's grand grandfather. Like it just wasn't the best look out here to have him in an OU, uh, you know, shirt and standing on the, on the field. I don't think that he was on the sidelines he wasn't. for the game, he was but at the same time, that's going to be a headline and people are going to talk about. Yeah, and it's, it's like you said, it's, it's, it can happen, honestly. It honestly just cannot happen, and I, and I understand what, what Jeff is saying after the game, but in terms of perception and everything that goes with that, that just cannot happen. And, and I, I, you know, Brent Venables even said he didn't know about it, uh, until right before he came into the didn't press seem too pleased about this situation. And he said things are being handled. I, I'm I'm assuming we will follow up with that when he speaks on Tuesday. But at the end of the day, it's just not a good look, and it, it just kind of overshadows the game, right? Um, and I, I just, you know, from Browse's perspective, he puts his son-in-law in a tough spot. I think yeah. too. I, I don't know if we're talking about that enough. He, he puts Jeff in a tough spot, and then Jeff, I think, just has to know better that it, he, that can't happen.
Oklahoma wins 28 to 11. My God, I feel like it, we're talking about a loss. Like, I honestly, I feel like we talk are talking about Oklahoma losing a football game, but they did win 28 to 11 on Saturday. They knock off uh, SMU, move to 2 0 on the season, and we go into week three. Staying in state, headed up the Turner Turnpike. Oklahoma plays Tulsa next week at 2 30, and, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll. It, I don't think Tulsa is very good. They got their ass beat uh, tonight in Seattle by Washington. I think they ended up losing by 33. So uh, for now, Oklahoma wins 2 0. There should be some good vibes, even though, you know, it wasn't probably what a lot of people expected. Uh, and I don't know, like maybe that's what they should have expected. They were 16 and a half point favorites that win by 17. I know that's not everything, but it's good for the alumni, right? Uh, for George Stoya, I'm Eddie Radosovich. We'll talk to you right here on Soonerscoop.com YouTube channel. Make sure you're subscribed and uh, we will pick it back up coming up on uh, Monday or Tuesday, I'm sure, when we meet with Brent Venables yet again here in Norman. Tulsa coming up next week. See you next time.